CK is a 28-year-old female with systemic lupus erythematosus with lupus nephritis, presenting for preconception counseling. Current medications include mycophenolate mofetil, tacrolimus, hydroxychloroquine, and lisinopril. At this time, she's feeling well and blood work showed normal renal functioning without any markers of disease activity. The discussion began with the expectation for her disease to be under control on pregnancy-compatible medications prior to attempts at conception. Medications considered triadogenic included mycophenolate mofetil and lisinopril. CK was switched off of mycophenolate and onto azathioprine and off of an ACE inhibitor and onto nifedipine. Tecrolimus and hydroxychloroquine were continued. CK went on to conceive at a time of very low disease activity. She presented her follow-up at 10 weeks gestation. According to 2020 ACR guidelines for the management of reproductive health in rheumatic and musculoskeletal diseases, the next step was assessing risk for neonatal lupus. Starting here on the left, you can see she was continued on hydroxychloroquine and was started on low-dose aspirin. Blood work showed positive anti-Rho SSA antibodies, although she had no history of neonatal lupus, and CK was sent to maternal fetal medicine for serial echocardiograms. Blood work was negative for antiphospholipid antibodies. She continued to follow up with rheumatology during both second and third trimester for monitoring of disease activity. CK fortunately delivered a healthy baby girl. Given the stability of lupus activity at her postpartum checkup, she was continued on azathioprine, hydroxychloroquine, and tacrolimus, which were all safe options for breastfeeding. Aspirin was discontinued. This case outlines the importance of rheumatology involvement at each stage of the family planning journey. There needs to be a clear communication on the safest treatment options and appropriate disease monitoring from preconception counseling through the postpartum period.